very slow, and while the United States and Russia aren't going to meet their deadlines, Japan and China will far surpass any deadlines that they should meet. So, so I'm just going to go over a little bit of the background of how they were abandoned during World War II, because that really sets the stage for how difficult it is now. And then we'll go into reasons why it's so slow, and just kind of a snapshot of the current situation and their current progress. Okay, so there's about 300,000 to 400,000 weapons all over China, and up, there's upward estimates of a million chemical weapons. When China first declared weapons, they introduced a paper describing about 2 million buried munitions. Through investigations, they brought this number down to about 300,000 to 400,000, but there's, they really have no clear idea. It's very difficult to find them because they're literally all over the place. So, Japan used chemical weapons during World War II in violation of the Geneva Protocol. This is a picture of um, Okinawa Island, which was this top secret chemical weapon production facility. It was even erased from unclassified maps, so it was very, it was very secretive. So this uh, facility produced about 600,000 tons of chemical agents throughout the war, and this was enough to produce 7.5 million munitions. So during Japan's invasion of China, there were two major chemical weapon units that were responsible for carrying out chemical weapon, lethal and non-lethal chemical weapon attacks. Their, these units were Unit 516 and Unit 526. They were responsible for about 889 to 2,900 attacks. The attacks are very poorly documented and it was after the war, a lot of the documents were destroyed and it was covered up to a large degree, so estimates range. Uh, over the course of World War II, Japanese attacks, and again, it's estimate, estimated around 80,000 casualties and about 10,000 fatalities, just the chemical weapon attacks. So, on the eve of their defeat, basically as the United States was dropping um, nuclear bombs and as Russia was sweeping through China, the pace to <coughs> destroy and dispose of these weapons was very frantic. So Unit 516 and 526, they got rid of these weapons really any way they could. Um, Unit 516, for example, threw weapons off a bridge into the Neijing River, and Unit 526 just dug pits all over China and just buried them. So they totally covered them up. When Allied forces came through China, there were no chemical weapons found, so they did a pretty good job of hiding these. There's been a wide variety of attack or um, incidences, but one that is a very good representation is in 2003, during a construction project, they unearthed some chemical weapons and they hit the um, bulk containers. So there was an exposure of mustard gas and sulfur, and a lot of the workers were injured, um, and over 40 school children surround in the surrounding area were injured. So that was a major deal, and that was it put a lot of pressure on Japan to finish destroying these weapons. So sorry, go back one. So for responsibility, Japan accepted responsibility for chemical weapons under the Chemical Weapons Convention. But since there's very loose guidelines under the CWC, they're only required to enter into negotiations with Japan to destroy weapons. So Japan didn't accept full technical and financial responsibility for these weapons until 1999. The whole process is extremely complex because there's these weapons are all over the place. They're in really awful condition. So they're literally scattered all throughout the country. The, no, the large majority of them, about 90% of the munitions, are in air in Herling, which you can see up right there. And then there's another very large deposit in Nanjing. But they don't they don't have a good grasp on where all the locations are. After World War II, uh, China and Japan worked to investigate where these weapons might be, so there weren't any other um, incidences after construction. So they interviewed World War II veterans. They really tried to survey areas, and they tried to get as good of a grasp as they can, but they're still discovering weapons as we go. So they're in really random places. This is a site from um, Gangzhou River, and just to find them, each of those flags represents a metal point, so they had to go through with metal detectors, and those just represent hits, so they have to go and check each of those sites, and that's just one site. That's a simple one to destroy. Um, and most of these weapons are in extremely remote locations, especially in Herbling. Herbling is prone to very severe weather conditions, and as a result, they can't, 
they couldn't do construction for a long time and they couldn't even reach these locations. They had to build infrastructure, basic infrastructure like roads. The road to the main weapon site in Hareland wasn't complete in 2003 and the weather conditions make it difficult to complete work five months out of the year. So, because they, they have to dig and they have to excavate and the ground is frozen, so they have difficulty there. The characteristics of chemical weapons makes them complicated to destroy. The, they've been underwater and they've been underground for decades. Unlike stockpiled weapons, which are in pretty controlled environments, these chemical weapons are leaking, they're damaged, you have people coming through and trying to lift them manually out of the ground, so there's a lot of accidents from that. Furthermore, there's um, picric acid in these weapons, and over the years it can form picrate, which is highly explosive, so when they're handling these or trying to destroy them, they have a good chance of ex just exploding. And when these weapons are neutralized, there's a good chance of them releasing arsenic, so all the gases have to be captured from any destruction efforts, so they really have to be careful with everything they do. It took them a long time just to figure out the, to figure out the technologies to destroy it, because it's so complicated, they had to research over 30 different technologies to choose incineration. Besides for just the technical and logistical problems, there is a myriad of other just surrounding problems with the project. There's, there needs to be a lot of negotiations between China and Japan because every little detail needs to be agreed upon and between these two countries there's sometimes difficult relations so as a result it takes a lot of effort just to agree on like the site location, the site destruction technologies and pretty much everything else. There's also a scandal in 2007 with the Japanese company destroying chemical weapons when they siphoned off a million dollars of public funds and that delayed production and or, um, destruction facility building and it really angered um, the Chinese side because weapon destruction had not started so they were seeing this as Japan trying to skirt their responsibilities even though it wasn't the Japanese, it was the Japanese company but it wasn't directly linked to the government. Uh, financial difficulties are also problematic because it's taken 2.6 billion dollars so far and the cabinet office projects that it will take another 9 billion dollars to just destroy them, especially with Fukushima, it's going to be difficult to untie these funds because in Japan it's not as big of an issue as it is in China. Uh, can we go to the next one, please? So, for progress, China didn't, no, none of these weapons were destroyed until, um, let's see, until September 1st, 2010. So they literally just started last year. Throughout this entire process, China has been extremely critical of the Japanese side, and this has not been really helpful. They frequently get up at the OPCW and just denounce Japan for World War II atrocities or for just not progressing fast enough. So this hampers negotiations and this slows down the process. But the actual destruction started in 2010 and China was excited about that, but there's still a whole lot that needs to be done. Since there's 300,000 to 400,000 weapons that they know about, there's only been um, 4,000 chemical weapons destroyed and that's between just, that's just in one month, October to November. They use a mobile destruction unit, and that's what's pictured here. So, since these weapons are so scattered around, they have to transport. They can't transport the weapons to a site. They have to bring the destruction to the weapons. So, Kobe Steel and Kawasaki Heavy Industry won the bid for the contract, and they take care of the mobile destruction units. There's um, 36,000 chemical weapons in Beijing, and they. Um, suspect that the mobile destruction unit will be able to destroy all of those within a year. The main problem comes down to the second leg of it, which isn't hurting. So, uh, as you can see here, it's a pretty vacant rural area, so it's tough to get anything down there. But they have excavated 46,000 in Herbling out of 300,000 to 400,000 weapons. And they estimate that you can only do 10,000 a year. So you have hundreds of thousands of weapons that are less left to be excavated, and even if you have them all excavated, it will take 10,000 or 10,000 a year. So best estimates take about 10 years, and it could take anywhere from 30 years to get these weapons done. And they're still finding weapons all throughout the country. So the really problem is excavating and finding these weapons. Once they get those done, they can use the mobile destruction units. But the whole process is extremely complicated, very slow. 
they missed their 2007 deadline to the Chemical Weapons Convention, and there's no way they will make the 2012 Chemical Weapons Deadline.